What's up, Razmanites? I wasn't planning on doing an episode today, but last night something hit me. And that is, if I'm going to do predictions on every TNA and WWE World Wrestling Entertainment pay-per-view, then I have to do reaction videos after I see each pay-per-view. And if this is going to be a continuing series, just like I can call the predictions predictions, because that's what they are, I need a cool name for the reactions. So welcome to How Did I Do? WWE Elimination Chamber 2010. Right now. On the Razman's Reality. Okay, so, how did I do? What happened at WWE Elimination Chamber? Well, let me start off by saying, for this first round of predictions, I only got two things right. Thing number one, Drew McIntyre is still SmackDown's WWE Intercontinental Champion. No surprise there. And thing number two, Chris Jericho is a champion. Let me break it down. First match of the night was for the WWE Championship inside the Elimination Chamber from Raw. And it was a finish which saw Sheamus pinned from the pedigree of Triple H, so we are guaranteed a new WWE Champion. The match boils down to John Cena versus the game. Cena locks in the STF. Triple H tries and tries and tries, but he's been too worn down to that point to resist the maneuver, and Triple H taps out. John Cena is your new WWE Champion. But oh wait, oh what tangled web we weave when Mr. McMahon we choose to mess with. Because Mr. McMahon angry over John Cena's getting behind Bret Hart in recent weeks on Raw continues the Batista angle as he announces that John Cena must defend the WWE Championship right then and there at the Elimination Chamber event against the Animal. And of course, since John Cena had just battled for nearly 45 minutes, I give WWE all the credit in the world. The opening Elimination Chamber match for the WWE Championship was hellacious. It was unbelievable, in my opinion. But Batista comes down, John Cena gets one shot in that does nothing but fire up Batista, Batista Spear, Batista Bomb. One, two, three for the second time at the event, the Elimination Chamber. We have a new WWE Champion and his name is the Animal Batista. Wow. Didn't see this one coming. That was a prediction that I didn't put in yesterday's episode, but it had been one that was floating around in my head, was what if John Cena walks out of the Elimination Chamber match, and the reason that Batista didn't enter the SmackDown Elimination Chamber match is because he wanted to face a champion who quote-unquote was worthy of him in John Cena. Well, I was half right, because Batista did involve himself in the W. WWE title picture, but he did it by screwing John Cena. And that seemed to be a theme for this pay-per-view. What do I mean? Well, I can't get there just yet. Next match of the night 
was for your Intercontinental Championship. I already told you what happened there. Drew McIntyre retains and is still SmackDown's Intercontinental Champion. The next match of the night was the Divas Championship match for the vacant Divas title. Gail Kim versus Maurice. Prior to the match, Gail Kim announces to Maurice that she speaks fluent French and that she has not been fooled one bit by Maurice's sportsmanship like approach to this match. This being in her corner because she knows that Maurice has been bad mouthing her the entire time in French. So it sets up tension for this match. Gail Kim comes out. Maurice comes out. But before the match can begin, EXCUSE ME! I said EXCUSE ME! <laughs> the official consultant to SmackDown, Vicky Guerrero, comes out and announces that because the Raw Divas have been saying some disparaging things against the SmackDown Divas, the Divas Championship match will be postponed and there will now be a tag match Ross, Maurice, and Gil Kim teaming up against Team Lay Cool, Layla, and Michelle McCool. Now, why did Vicky Guerrero have this match? Because she was the only diva with authority that night. So, that's WWE's cop out, Vicky Guerrero, somewhat of an authority figure in that role. They let her make the match. The match was made. And as one would expect, because Maurice was exposed as a heel prior to the match, she does nothing to help Gail Kim. It becomes a handicap match. Layla and Michelle McCool are your winners. Next up, it was an unannounced filler match. As The Miz does an interview, The Miz is talking about mentoring Dana Bryan when he's interrupted by MVP, who says, because he earned a pinfall victory over The Miz in a non-title tag team match against Miz and the Big Show alongside Mark Henry on Raw. That makes him the number one contender for the United States Championship again. He gets another shot. So that match happens. Anybody can see what happens now because of his association with the Big Show. Big Show right hand behind the referee's back to MVP. Miz 1, 2, 3 retains the United States Championship. And then there was one match left. Your main event for the World Heavyweight Championship. The match comes down in the end to Chris Jericho and The Undertaker. This was another great match. John Morrison really shined in this match. So I'm not sure what the whole ankle injury thing was supposed to be, except for it did cost him some quote-unquote moments in the match, so maybe they just did it to slow down the pacing. But nonetheless, as I said, it came down to Undertaker versus Jericho. At one point, it looks like Jericho is going to make the Undertaker tap out to the walls. That doesn't happen. And Undertaker rebounds. Hits the last ride, looks to be on his way to retaining the World Heavyweight Championship when all of a sudden, from underneath the ring, comes the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, sweet chin music to The Undertaker, Chris Jericho for the cover, one, two, three, Chris Jericho is a champion, he is your World Heavyweight Champion. Not the WWE Champion, as I hope to see happen, but he is your World Heavyweight Champion. And Shawn Michaels officially turns heel and solidifies that The Undertaker must now face him at WrestleMania, but he didn't do it by winning the world title, as I originally had predicted. He did it by costing The Undertaker the World Heavyweight Championship. So the Elimination Chamber 
that was another thing I had right, I guess you could say, is that the Elimination Chamber was indeed a night of surprises. But it was surprises that I didn't see coming in a different way to set things up. And now the road to WrestleMania becomes very rocky indeed. This is reality according to the Razman. And Razman's style is not just a catchphrase, but a way of life.